Welcome back to the show. We switch gears here tonight on a show where we often talk about professional sports and all the local teams in our area. Uh, but, you know, we have Scholar Athlete of the Week here once a week, and we are uh, often looking at the high school side of things. And that's where we go tonight, and it's an interesting topic, and it's about trainers, and it's about who's on hand at athletic events at the high school level and even lower. And something as a parent, um, you might not think about too much, but when it's brought up to you, that who's on hand, is there an ambulance, a doctor, a trainer? You start wondering, were there people at those soccer games? I'm not so sure. John Gallucci Jr. is the president and CEO of JAG Physical Therapy. He joins us tonight and he's an advocate of uh, mandating the use of athletic trainers at the youth sports level and that includes high school and, 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 and going on down the line. John, welcome to New York One. Kevin, thank you so much for having me. Very excited. You are uh, out there, out and about, trying to get this message across, so let me just throw that out at you. What is the message uh, that, that you want to get out there and what would you like to see rectified in high school sports? Let's go there with what's not going on right well, now. We have a profession in the United States called the Certified Athletic Trainer. I've been one practicing for 25 years. I'm also a physical therapist. And Certified Athletic Trainers are basically there for the medical care and treatment of active people and athletes mostly. We see it all the time in professional sports. We see it all the time in college sports. In high school sports, it's kind of catch as catch can. And in youth sports, we don't see it really at all except for maybe some major high-level tournaments. Uh, what I don't understand is why we as parents, as coaches, as, as people involved in our communities, if we already have a profession called certified athletic trainers, why aren't we mandating them at the state level? So I'm trying to push for legislation both in New York and New Jersey to try to get a mandate to utilize certified athletic trainers for all high school sports and all organized youth sports so this way we can look at the safety of our children. When uh, you're, you're in Jersey now, you grew up in New York. Um, when you look at at the high school level on both sides of the river is there one that's better than the other is there one that's more lax in this department than the other when you look at it overall well certified and again i'm born and raised brooklyn staten island kid uh went to monsignor Farrell high school in staten island and, and the biggest thing is certified athletic trainers when it comes to the high school level we're a little bit more adopted easily based on different budget lines i'm sure based on the different townships throughout New Jersey. So each township is in charge of their own budget line. Here in New York City, we know that we have the public school system, which is under the city budget. So I don't know. I think that everybody understood that the need of certified athletic trainers. I think it really became a budget question, uh, where in the townships, it was individual towns that realized the importance. There are still many places, high schools in, in New Jersey, that don't have full-time athletic trainers or don't have the use of a certified athletic trainer. And here in New York, now, as you see in the PSAL, they're utilizing certified athletic trainers. But we have cities like Newark that it's in their budget line that each one of their high schools have a certified athletic trainer. I think we need to push it here, not just in the PSAL, but also in the CHSAA, the private schools. A lot of our private schools already employ athletic trainers. So I think that, again, there's a hit or miss. I think that the, our, our, our legislators need to stop hit or miss because that hit or miss may, may lose a life. So why not have the opportunity to have a certified athletic trainer at all events or at least be within three minutes of, of an event, similar to what we did with the AED laws across the country. So if you need an AED within three minutes of the field, why can't we have a certified athletic trainer within two to three minutes? So as a campus and a high school, why can't we definitively make sure that there's somebody on site that understands act, a, athletes' injuries and illness? The other thing we could possibly do is mitigate some of these overuse injuries. If we mitigate overuse injuries, it's a lot better to have the kids out on the court, the ice, the field, than to have them in my offices at JAG Physical Therapy. I'd rather see kids out playing than have to go to the doctor three, four times a week and have to go in and out of emergency rooms if maybe having that educated certified athletic trainer on campus can get involved in the teaching of prevention of injuries, the teaching of hydration. You know how many injuries happen because of dehydration? I'm, I know you've covered different things throughout the, the pre-seasons of kids dehydrated. Unfortunately, through our country, we've had kids pass away. If we put certified athletic trainers at all these schools, maybe the education component can save a life. And we all know the concussion, the concussion dilemmas. Right. And, and you know, I was talking to you earlier 
uh, my son goes to a parochial high school in New Jersey, and my daughter had gone there before, and in, in the middle of her sophomore junior year, a, a, a trainer came on board, and they had never had one there before, at least while my kids were at this high school. And uh, my son runs cross country, and a couple of weeks ago, he said something was bothering him, and I said, well, why don't you go in and see the trainer? He said, well, he left. Uh, he took another job somewhere. And now I realize there's no one at that school. So that uh, that is something I never thought of uh, you know, the guy being there one minute and then he's not there and there's no mandate from the school that they have to go out and get somebody. And again, as you just said, there is no legislature that says there needs to be there. So the rush to replace that athletic trainer kind of gets put on the back burner. As I told you earlier today in our conversation, in New Jersey, there was a bunch of budget cuts several years ago. The first person to lose their job is the certified athletic trainer. So, you know, these are healthcare professionals trained to help active healthy people mm. if they get injured we already know all the concussion issues going on in our country right now we talk about the return to play protocols the cdc in our country is mandated each new york and new jersey is mandated return to play protocols well who's in charge at the school to make sure this policy is really being implemented being followed uh, we've had issues with kids passing away because they didn't get medical care appropriately in the amount of time. We've had kids with fractures that are basically picked up by coaches trying to help that possibly make the fracture or the dislocation worse. We have these medical professionals in our country. Why don't we change the legislature or have legislature that mandate them? And then when we jump to the youth sports, how many tournaments have you been with a thousand or two thousand kids in the parks in New Jersey or in Long Island or in Westchester? and you have virtually sometimes no one or maybe one individual for a thousand to two thousand kids but yet in the college level the NATA has done a great job in saying you know athletic trainers should be one every hundred and fifty athletes well, but yet we can have one athletic trainer or no athletic trainer covering two thousand kids in a, a huge acreage of parkland how do you get access the other thing that an athletic trainer would do is basically grow emergency action plans so if a child is hurt the coaches, the parents know exactly what's going to happen to do. Let's say legislation goes through and it's mandated that every high school has to have a trainer and at games, uh, whatever the sport may be, are there enough women and men trainers around to go around all the high schools in our area? So our country is great with certified athletic trainer schools throughout the country and, and right now they're pushing for a master's level degree before you become certified. There are still some schools that are at the bachelor's level. I think that New York and New Jersey, because there wasn't the opportunities of jobs, other the athletic trainers look at other states. So Pennsylvania is flooded with athletic trainers because they make it a little easier and they sort of, I don't know if it's state legislature, but it's accepted more. I think here in New York and New Jersey, if we get that acceptance of, of the profession, of certified athletic trainers, I think you'll see an influx of people applying for those positions. Also, I think we need to change the fluctuation of budget lines. I mean, uh, a medical professional should be paid as a medical professional. A principal is paid as a principal. Mm -hmm. A teacher is paid as a teacher. Why don't we pay a certified athletic trainer the appropriate amount of money that's the standard across the country? Ken, is there anything the average Joe public can do to try to help with this? Well, parents and coaches can definitively help out. It's all about the safety of our children. If we could get our children safe by just having a proper professional on the field, why not? Having them diagnosed quicker, why not? I honestly think that if you look at our state here in New York and New Jersey, we have the best opportunity because our legislators have already put in different types of laws for the safety of our children, from concussion to cardiac to, to, to the component in New Jersey. They have a supplement and steroid law. So we just have to get our legislators to take the next step. When you say, do I have people behind me? We've spoken to a bunch of legislators on both sides of the, of the river, and, and basically they're supportive they're doing their investigative work right now. They're trying to get proposed uh, verbiage written in, 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 in possibly some sort of law to bring to table. And the goal is hopefully in the next two to three weeks we'll actually have something substantial on both sides of the river. We're pretty excited about that. Our next move is, again, certified athletic trainers definitively support their profession. The New York State Athletic Trainers Association and the Athletic Training Society in New Jersey are probably two of the strongest athletic training societies in our country. They've done an unbelievable job when it came to, comes down to education, when it comes down to prevention of injury. I think both associations are definitively going to support it unbelievably, but they want to see if they can get that legislative support. So I'm excited over the next two weeks to truly get that push to bring it to the next level. 
Well, we certainly, and I as a parent, parents, uh, certainly appreciate all the work you're doing. Uh, John Gallucci, Jr., he is the president and CEO of JAG Physical Therapy. And again, uh, he's out there trying to uh, get legislature through uh, mandating the use of athletic trainers down at the youth level of sports. John, thanks for your good work, and thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Appreciate it.